Adequate notice of this meeting was provided in accordance with Chapter 231, Public Law 1975, Senator Byron M. Baer, Open Public Meetings Act. Uh, take a moment of silence. everyone and welcome to all of our people online or the telephone good evening I'm Nancy Ridgeway from Upper Deerfield and Fairfield Townships on resolution 2023 181 it's a resolution authorizing the award of a non-fair and open contract for legal services in litigation entitled CCJ Energy Partners LLCV Cumlin County docket number and there's a docket number and it's for a hundred thousand dollars we had some lawyers and I'm pretty sure the legal bills was over two hundred thousand dollars for this lawsuit and now we're going to give a company or a attorney firm over a hundred thousand dollars to defend the county some more in this in in these legal matters can anybody give me an update on what's going on i i know it was in court uh, the first week in march mr ridgeway i'm happy to give you an update and i also turn over to a solicitor if i miss any points we we were pursued for being sued for over six million dollars and it was us and ccia the CCIA filed a motion to split us from them. And while we were doing our research, um, chime in any time, while we were doing our research, there were many things that, uh, that came to light over this CCJ um, um, suit. So it is the tip of the iceberg in our sense, and we thought we, we need it's a representation that will actually represent us with no ties to anything. And we searched and we found someone. They're not cheap, but we need good representation uh, to protect our interests in this county. And uh, we this we don't know where it's going to go. We're just starting, but. Uh, we will, after this happens, we will happily inform more details to everyone's here and everyone's listening because it's, um, uh, we, um, uh, I'm trying to say this very diplomatically, um, we, uh, we don't like what we say and uh, we think that it should be looked at and we, that's why we're doing this, the, not that the other law firm was no good, but uh, they had ties to, we wanted someone who was pretty independent from anything, and that's why we brought this in. And we did look at a lot of different law firms to sit on this because they have no problem taking on the players we feel are involved. 
Um, I'm, we're not going to say a lot to vote it on. This, this uh, commission uh, is behind it, but we will tell our cards we will put on the table after the motion is filed. And um, and I think it'll be an eye opener from some of the things we've seen. Um, and uh, we think our is more. Uh, we think Brad will put our eyes on Sir, could you mute, mute the, please? We think um, this commission feels that we that it's too uh, late to ignore. And we believe that wherever it goes, it goes. We we apologize, but we we have a, we have a responsibility to act. Uh, we didn't create the issue because we responded, uh, but we are not going to do not do our job. So uh, I'm not going to look at a price tag when this. Uh, uh, we always look at a price tag, but. It's uh, it's much bigger than this that you're seeing, Mr. Ridgeway. So I, I wish you would give us a little leeway to you guys hear the facts that we know, and we can we can tell you. Am I missing anything? No, I think that that's. I think everything you said is accurate, and uh, to the extent that this board takes its role very seriously as stewards of the public trust, it is necessary to fully and fairly defend against a suit where somebody wants six million dollars from the taxpayers, and that's what's going on. So, Mr. Uh, Andrew, I just ask you to give us, uh, just bear with us, and we'll happily give you as much information we can reveal, but we have to do follow through the motion first. And then we can. Then this board has to agree, and if they agree, then then we'll happily answer as many questions we can, whatever we can. And I think you will also feel comfortable to do that. And anyone in this audience, and anyone on the phone, wants to ask questions after we do this, we'll happily answer as much as we can do. Uh, but I think you may come up with the same conclusion we came up with that this has to be pursued and that's where we're at so another question is did we ever cancel the contract with this company with, with which company Mr. with a the ccj yes i think that's a fact in dispute with regard yeah. to the litigation so you're asking an interesting question but it's very much in focus in the, in the litigation Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Rizmer. Uh Anyone else like to on anything on the agenda? Okay. Seeing seeing nobody, uh, uh, can I can I make a motion to uh, to uh, public comment? I close public comment. All set. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Uh, we'll move on to the resolution. So, Resolution 2023-181, <coughs> resolution authorizing the award of a non-fair and open contract for legal services in litigation entitled CCJ Energy Partners, LLC versus Cumberland County, docket number CUNMLC at 713-20. And a second. Anyone make the motion? So moved. I'll second. Then you have to approve roll call. Commissioner Pearson? Yes, after talking to County Council, we made very clear as to why this is necessary. Yes. Commissioner Musso? Yes, I talked to County Council. Commissioner Capizola? Yes. Commissioner Saleo? Yes. Commissioner Lewis? Yes. Deputy Director Romero? Yes. Director Albright? Yes. Resolution 2023-182, resolution authorizing payment of bills. May I have a motion and a second? So moved. Second. Roll call. Commissioner Pearson? Yes. Commissioner Musso? Yes. Commissioner Capizola? Yes. Commissioner Saleo? Yes. Commissioner Lodes? Yes. Deputy Director Romero? Yes. Director Albright? Yes. Now we're going to do the public comment period on Cap budget resolution, resolution number 14082, resolution authorizing the county to exceed the 2% budget cap for the 2023 county budget. Consent agenda items. 
Resolution. One. Resolution number 14096. Resolution authorizing and approving additional 2023 temporary budget appropriations in the amount of $234,634.87. Two, resolution number 2023-143, resolution authorizing the purchase of one Alamo 18-foot Samurai Boom, one Alamo Interstater 74-inch RH, and one Alamo Interstater for use with John Deere 5095 and tractors for the Department of Public Works. Mr. Romero, you have anything? Mr. Sale, Mr. Sale. Me? You see, Neil, you're here? I'm here. Neil, on the, uh, on the uh, John Deere. How many of those do we have in, in our hands? John Deere's? We, do, we, we have, have two John on order. Deers. I know this is, I think this is your first time ordering John Deere's. Yes. Right. How many do you have in another brand? We have four Bodas and we have three um, New Hollands. How many operators do we have? We have 10 that in each work region. every day with that? Every day? Yeah. As long as the weather's good, we put them on the road every day. How many do we have? How many operators? We have 10 in each region. We got 10? Yeah. 10 guys, like 10, 10 people in each region that have the ability to run that equipment. Well, they're, all, they're all trained question. on it. Do you object to being on the consent agenda? Mr. Romero, Mr. Cilio, you No. Okay. Uh, he's answered my question. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Yep. Resolution number 14040, resolution exercising option to renew contract for lease of county-owned farmlands located near to Cumberland Manor, bid number 22-09. Number four, resolution 14045, prosecutor's office. Resolution authorizing grant applications to the New Jersey Office of the Attorney General for a subgrant under the FFY22 Victims of Crime Act grant program. Five, resolution number 14065. Resolution authorizing purchase from New Jersey State contract vendor for one model DS65I folder inserter with impre impress cloud solution for the prosecutor's office. Okay, I like to pull it off the consent agenda. Can you hear me? I like to pull that off the consent agenda. Six, resolution number 14054. Resolution declaring April 2023 as National Child Abuse Prevention Month. Seven, resolution number 14057. Resolution authorizing Cumberland County to opt in to participate in opioid litigation settlement with Teva, Allergen, CVS, Walmart, and Walgreens. Eight, resolution number 14061. Resolution declaring a 20... 14 Chevrolet Tahoe, Tahoe PPB, VIN number 1GN SK2E02ER14153, asset number 8573, as surplus and unneeded property, and authorizing the transfer of title to Cumberland County Technical Education Center. If you could pull that from consent agenda also. If anybody has a comment, wants to, if this is where your child, they you have a question or yeah, like what, what are they using it for? I'm just curious. Yeah. So. Resolution number 14062, resolution authorizing purchase from New Jersey State contract vendor for 20 sets of survival armor, incorporated brand body armor for the Cumberland County Department of Corrections. Question, what exactly is the armor? And what is the use? I'm not sure. Maybe. Yeah. Well, you need clarification. Director, you want to step up to the mic? Sure. <coughs> Good evening. Chuck Albino, the director of the Cumberland County Department of Corrections. The, the vests that I asked that very question 
it's the body protective vest that the officers wear and they're, they have a life expectancy to them. So what we do on a rotational basis, these are the number of vests that we'll need that will come out of cycle in 2023. So that'll cover us for so the year. The absolutely, okay. yes. Thinking of okay. something medieval here, you know? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I, I asked the same question. So we're on the same page. Thank you. Again, resolution number 14063, resolution authorizing pur purchase from New Jersey state contract vendor for renewal of required monthly elevator inspections, maintenance, repair, and testing. Director, this is also on the new part of the jail, this is the contract, right? He asked for. I'm sorry, I missed the, uh, the reading. Number, number 10 is the uh, maintenance of the contract uh, the elevators. You asked us to renew the contract on the new part of the jail. We did the jail. Correct. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. 11. Re resolution number 14064. Resolution rescinding resolution 2022-654. Awarding a contract for 2021 TTF road program. City of Millville, Cumberland County, New Jersey. Bid number 22-49 and authorizing the resubmission of the bid number 22-49. Twelve resolution number one four zero six six resolution amending resolution twenty twenty one dash five one seven resolution authorizing application to and grant agreement with New Jersey Transit and the United States States Department of Transportation for grant funding under the Federal Transit Act section five three one one from January first twenty twenty two to December thirty first twenty twenty two. 13. Resolution number 14067. Resolution authorizing an agreement with the New Jersey Judiciary, Cumberland County, Gloucester, Salem, Vicinage for the provision of juvenile youth service programs. Resolution number 14070. Resolution declaring 1 Hassler WJ250, a mail machine, serial number. 401J471-0018, asset number 07997, a surplus and unneeded property and authorizing turnover to the CCIA for recycling. 15, resolution number 14071, resolution awarding contract for specifications for the 2022 road program, CR 608, 662, 697, and 731. Cities of Bridgeton and Millville, Townships of Deerfield and Upper Deerfield, Cumberland County, New Jersey, bid number 23-10. 16, resolution number 14072, resolution awarding contract for bid 23-12-2023, striping program 17, resolution number 14073, Resolution awarding contract for providing student transportation services for the Wawa Summer Program for the Cumberland County Department of Workforce Development. Excuse me. Um, back to 14072. It's all right. Is the funding receipt of opening the bids or? Yeah, sure they open on the 16th. Um, but that's, yeah, she read out the, for the striping program for public works. Okay. Um, so we have a lot of uh, blank just placeholder ones that we just want information bids, now. So just standard bids. Yeah. And, okay. All right. Thank you. Seventeen. Resolution number one four zero seven four. Eighteen. Uh, on, can you pull up number uh, uh, 17 off the uh, 17, 17 in the wall off the 18. Resolution number 14074. Resolution awarding fair and open contract for multi model community transportation analysis for the Southeast Gateway neighborhood of the City of Bridgeton. RFP number 23 09. I would also like to say to the city. 19. Resolution number 14075. Resolution in support of Marsh River Township's dredging project. 20. Resolution number 14076. 
resolution approving change order number one and final to contract for specifications for the 2021 local freight impact fund road program two township of commercial cumberland county new jersey bid number 21-38 21, resolution number 14077. Resolution authorizing grant agreement extension with the New Jersey Department of Community Affairs for Local Efficiency Achievement Program. Challenge grant. 22, resolution number 14080. Resolution amending agreement by and between the County of Cumberland and the New Jersey Department of Transportation for the 2021 County Aid Program to include the 2020 Local Freight Impact Fund Road Program and the 2022 Local Freight Impact Fund Road Program. 23, resolution number 14083. Governing body certification of compliance with the United States Equal Employment Opportunity Commission's enforcement guidance on the consideration of arrest and conviction records in employment decisions under Title VII of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. 24, resolution number 14084. Resolution authorizing amendment number three to the spending plan for the coronavirus local fiscal recovery fund and canceling certain balances. 25, resolution number 14085. Resolution awarding fair and open professional service contract providing as needed general AU consulting services for the County of Cumberland, RFQ 22-53 resubmission pending. Should we pull that since it's pending for three seconds? Since there's no further information. Any attendance? 26, resolution awarding fair and open professional service contract providing as needed general environmental consulting services to the County of Cumberland, RFQ number 22 54, resubmission pending. Resolution ID number, resolution number 14087, resolution determining the form and other details, $3,308,000 general obligation bond of the County of Cumberland, New Jersey, and providing for their sale. Resolution number 14088, resolution awarding fair and open contract for providing consulting services for the Department of Corrections, County of Cumberland, RFP number 23-11. Since we follow the pattern, that's yeah. one false. 29, resolution number 14089, resolution awarding a contract for providing various ser social services for the Cumberland County Youth Services Advisory Council Community Living Enrichment Program, RFP number 22-62 resubmission. That's all. Resolution number 14090, resolution awarding a contract for providing various social services for the homeless for the County of Cumberland, Cumberland County Department of Human Services, RFP number 22-63. Resolution number 14091, resolution awarding contract for providing plumbing repair services for the County of Cumberland and the County of County Cumberland County Cooperative Contract Purchasing System identifier number 181-3. CC, CCPS, bid number 23-06. Director, this is also part of the, uh, the item. This is for the new and old, no, the new and annex upgrade plumbing in the Correct. Resolution number 14092. Resolution awarding contract for providing preventative maintenance and repair services for emergency generators at various Cumberland County locations. Bid number 23-03. Resubmission. Resolution number 14097. Resolution authorizing grant application to the New Jersey Department of Community Affairs for Local Efficiency Achievement Program, County Coordinator Fellowship Grant. Resolution number 14098, resolution supporting commercial townships request for funding assistance for repairs to the Morristown Riverfront 
Four. Both head. Thirty-five. Resolution number one four zero nine nine. Resolution canceling expired contracts for March twenty twenty-three, covering materials, services, and supplies. Thirty-six. Resolution number one four one zero zero. Resolution authorizing purchases from the state contract vendors. 37, resolution number 14101. Resolution approving change order number one to con contract for providing plumbing repair services for the County of Cumberland and the Cumberland County Cooperative Contract Purchasing System. Identifier number 181-CC CCPS, bid number 20-19. 38, resolution number 14102, resolution authorizing increase of monetary ceiling for legal expenses in the litigation matter of Brown Clark et al. versus Charles Warren, U.S. District Court, docket number 1 20-CV 7907. This should be off the discussion. Thirty-nine resolution number one four one zero three, resolution authorizing increase of monetary ceiling for legal expenses in accordance with NJAC five colon thirty dash five point three through NJAC five colon thirty dash five point five for workers' compensation matter of Amanda Wilmore versus Kent Car County of Cumberland. This should also be lost. So. Forty resolution number one four one zero four. Resolution authorizing increase of monetary ceiling for legal expenses in the litigation matter of Todd Ford Jr. First Ford and Smith, Cumberland County, U.S. District Court, docket number one, colon 20-CV-12655 and one colon 20-CV-8863 in accordance with NJAC 5 colon 30-5.3 through NJAC 5 colon 30-5.5. Resolution number 14105. Resolution authorizing increase of monetary ceiling for legal expenses in litigation matter in accordance with NJAC 5 colon 30 dash 5.3 through NJAC 5 colon 30 dash 5.5. Thank you. Pull that off. Forty-two resolution number one four one zero six resolution authorizing increase of monetary ceiling for legal expenses in the litigation matter of Brown Clark et al. versus Charles Warren, U.S. District Court, docket number one colon twenty dash CV dash seven nine zero seven in accordance with NJAC five colon thirty dash five point three through NJAC five colon thirty dash five point five. Thank you. Pull that off. 43. Resolution number 14107. Resolution rescinding resolution 2020-556 authorizing the county administrator and county staff to proceed with layoffs as approved by the New Jersey Civil Service Commission. Hey, I'm going to make a comment on this because it's actually some of the questions I've been asking the director all part of the package of what we're doing. Um, this is, we were told that our staff uh, at the, at our jail, uh, still, I believe that the layoff notices are in fact uh, from way from the previous board, and they were uh, taken away by the uh, uh, what's the what's the word the state uh, civil service. civil service. They were taken away by civil service, and it, it was it's not void, but it was never rescinded by our board. Or, or that we were never we were not laying off uh, our, our our people. And so we're just making clear that we are not laying off our people. We we will you guys will figure this out. We we have a plan. A uh, we'll discuss. Or we'll be discussing further um, a plan, a short-term plan, an immediate plan, and a long-term plan for our jail, which is the number one priority that we have to get going so we can move on to other stuff. I pointed out, asked the director several questions about plumbing. Um, the elevator. Uh, right now, we we are in the process of uh, taking our jail right now, which is the new, new part and the annex, and we are painting it. 
We are uh, upgrading the clothing that's been black and has not been taken care of. We, our elevators, we're making sure they work. Uh, that's why we have a, our contracts are making sure they're in place. There's several other little things we're doing, whatever needs to be taken. And the idea is to prevent any future lawsuits, but also to upgrade a facility that uh, uh, that's, uh, solely needs some upgrading as best we can. We're going to use that facility. Um, that's the intermediate plan. The short term plan, we'll, um, short term plan, we are actually um, decided we're going to we're going we're to get our well, we are going to get our inmates back to in Hudson County. I think June first, which is 300, about roughly over 300 inmates. North of 200 today. 200 today. 200 today. A little over 200. A little over 200. We're going to be received back, and we're not prepared for them. Um, so we've kind of developed a plan that we're getting ready to. We've approached. Uh, uh, we've had asked two other counties to step forward that they would help us out, and literally they're helping us out. We're going to pay, but they're they they are stepping forward to help us, and we'll remember that. And uh, we've already met with one of the counties. We're going to meet with the other county, and they've already said they will take our inmates. So, two hundred. We'll figure out the number we can send to them. But they are closer than Hudson County, and it's better for our people, better for our prosecutor, better for their defense to be able to be able to reach maybe a sooner time period to get them over to court to uh, do what they have to do in court. Um, so we're doing a short-term plan. The immediate plan, and the, and the director understands that he has to get to a certain number that we can handle. And then the third one, we will uh, uh, introduce in a little bit our uh, uh, move to. Uh, we'll do that shortly. Uh, remember, I said the deadline May 1st. We're going to be way ahead of that because we need to get going and solve our, our, solve our problem. Uh, we're bleeding money and we're not going to continue doing that. So, uh, and this work all is on the same page to figure out. You've been muted. That we can yourself. Thanks a lot. Time's up. 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 Time's up.
suffered uh, and injuries and or other abnormalities, uh, health and health wise, uh, from Agent Orange. Uh, and since I'm liaison to the Veterans Affairs, I spoke with Diana Pittman. We are now raising this resolution um, to not just encompass Agent Orange, but encompass all possible injuries from all wars uh, to help um, dignify the veterans who fought in Vietnam and others, other wars as well as possibly give them some type of um, commemoration, whether it be a ribbon and or a medal of some type. Uh, this is not monetary, this is strictly just recognition for, the, for their service. So I just want to make that clear to everyone. And, and Commissioner Cilio really went and what worked on this and uh, drafted, they actually, uh, there was some concerns, but he they were addressed by them working together and the VA, the vet, our Veterans Affairs, right, and Mr. Silly should be applauded because it's not just, uh, it's, it's a broad, but it's, it's tight, uh, detailed enough that it, it recognizes all, all the conflicts who've been in if, if they're service-related injuries. And uh, it's a very nice job. And actually, we're setting up to, he's also told, introduced to the Congress of Andrew, right. and use kind of similar language. So it was a pretty good effort, all started by our meeting down in Morningshore Township and an individual show. Up, uh, veterans showing up to uh, express their view to this. So I, I, there is one thing that I did learn, though, Commissioner, was that uh, when a congressman introduces an HR bill and it only lasts for two years, and then it's basically put on the back burner, it doesn't exist any longer. It starts from day one all over again after that two years. So that bill it was uh, 4982, which Mr. Oliver um, uh, alluded to. And unfortunately, he was no longer uh, useful in that particular case. Um, Mr. Van Drew's office has been very helpful, and they are going to see what they can do as far as maybe raising another bill up to Congress to see if we can get passed. So, good job. Yeah. Four, 48, resolution number 14112, enabling resolution authorizing the filing of a spending plan for a 2022 Recycling Enhancement Act tax fund entitlement pursuant to Public Law 2007, Chapter 311, EDSEC, here and after the Act. 49, resolution number 14113. Resolution ratifying support for New Jersey Transit, South Jersey Transit Market Study application impacting New Jersey's Atlantic, Cape May, Cumberland, and Salem counties to the Federal Transit Administration. Areas of Persistent Poverty Program. I have to go back to county budget tax resolutions for the year 2023. I missed it at the very beginning. Uh, we're going to just make a comment. This, we, on this resolution, the one with the, the market study, uh, we, well, part of this is that we are trying to. Uh, uh, there, uh, there's a transportation issue which everybody is carrying kind of knows that sometimes we take for granted to move our vehicles, but there's a lot of people who do not in areas that we lack any kind of uh, transportation at all. We, we are part of the study to kind of find out what our needs and where the biggest needs are and so we can address those. Um, it's something that from you know, since I've sat here that I always talk about uh, having budgets to the county because I think it's a need, especially in the southern part of the township. So this is a, a uh, it comes out of that. I, um, I can't take credit for actually getting the study started. But it's actually, I'm, I'm hoping to see it's what the results are so we can start targeting our, what we can control, what we have to meet those needs. And today I was informed that uh, a gentleman that, who has a job, who dis, has a disability, has a bus route that goes to, and I'll say it goes to Long Lake, he's the only person in Long Lake he goes to, that will be discontinued because there's no funds. And so here's a guy, here's someone that wants to work. Gets it to go to work, and now we'll not have transportation to get there. We're, we're, we're going to figure out a solution to that. But it would be nice maybe to have a bus route running by Laurel Lake, uh, going to Port Norris, making a round trip to wherever city has got to so they can get a connection. Um, New Jersey Transit doesn't run, most of the time does not run north to south. 
Um, so uh, that's where I see most of what we can do is run north to south to meet east to west in New Jersey Transit. So I, I do say uh, um, Commissioner Musso worked on trying to find a solution to that problem that I just mentioned. And, and I, I met Commissioner Romero also to find a solution uh, who also just found tra another transportation issue over the over the weekend dealt with it and uh, to help someone that did not have a ride or family did not have a ride. Is that correct? Am I saying that right? Partly. Partly. Yeah. So maybe I'm not so, getting totally straight, but yeah. I'm not telling all of what they didn't have rides, but it was taken, it was dealt with. And do uh, you want to make a comment about it? Uh, actually, uh, actually, Melissa, uh, Melissa was involved in that. She's the one that called me. You want to explain what happened? over the week and uh, and what we did about it. Okay. Yes. <laughs> if you're here. Hi everybody. Melissa Niles, Department Head for uh, Human Services. So, Code Blue, we have monthly coordination meetings with the municipalities uh, just to keep in touch, you know, with their needs and, and you know, for an opportunity for them to network and share about challenges and things that work, et cetera. So uh, one of the things that was shared was um, during Code Blue, there was um, Spanish speaking and undocumented people. There was nine of them who were um, at Code Blue. They were willing to be screened to go to the shelter, which most of the time, People aren't even willing to be screened to go to the shelter, but these people were willing. We had an interpreter, so they were screened by the shelter. They were accepted, but they did not have transportation to get there. Uh, they had 48 hours to get there, but once, you know, the mindset and the fear, right, the fear factor, so after we collect information about them, and then there's no ride, you know, we don't know where they went. Um, they. So we would like to prevent that from happening again. So I reached out to public safety liaisons and uh, thank you very much for your help because we have a contingency plan for if in the future, um, the few and far between instances when that happens, when someone does not have transportation. So you were able to work that out and I appreciate it. And they were in Bridgeton and they needed to get the buying money. Yes, so they're in the western side of the county over here in Bridgeton and the shelter is all the way out on Mays Landing Road, almost in Atlanta County. So they couldn't stay in Bridgeton? So Bridgeton, so the code blues are warming centers. It's not emergency shelters. Emergency shelter is requires a specific license by the uh, Division of Community Affairs, which is rural development is our contracted family shelter. Um, so not only do sometimes uh, people, they can't get all the way out there, there's also some people who are not allowed at the family shelter, like a sex offender or if there's um, some other situations where they, or they've already expended, if somebody is, receives public benefits, they only get 12 months in their whole life to use shelter benefit. Yeah. So, um, you know. The, the code blues are very nice, you know, they're warming centers, but they don't solve the problem because at 6 a.m. the people have to go back out. So we're just trying to, and, we, and these people, they wanted to be somewhere in a shelter where they didn't have to leave at 6 o'clock in the morning and be out here, which is, which is where they are, unfortunately. The point is we don't have uh, transportation that they could hop on to go to the shelter or ride their motorcycle. So I know exactly where the shelter is on the maze landing where you're talking about. Right? Yes. Yeah, so so at six o'clock in the morning, they're getting out and they're just walking down the streets. No, they're getting out of Code Blue. It's a thing. Yeah. No, that's what I'm talking about. And then where they, if they have to get anywhere, they would have to walk. Through <coughs> so they definitely work. Wow. It really is. They're not. They're not sent away from the shelter. They were in the code blue in oh, Bridgeton. Okay. They were in code blue in Bridgeton, and there's another code blue in Vine. There's three code blues in, in Cumberland. Okay, okay. And so while while they were in code blue, they agreed to go to a shelter. Gotcha. They were in Bridgeton, and they needed to be transported from Bridgeton to Vineland, and it, and now we have something in place and a backup plan to that.
in case it happens again. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. As Ms. Ms. Nile said, that sometimes you can't get people to go because mm -hmm. they're undocumented. Well, not just, not just that. Go all the way over there because right. how can they get all the way back? If they're how they're going to get from my so, over there? That's like, it's not even all right. So and that's why I'm going down the transportation and, and, and not just there, but transportation in the county is tough. And actually, people from there to get their jobs, they work. That's <coughs> the issue. That's the issue. So, well, just pointing out again that transportation is an issue we got to tackle. And this study is something that can end. So yes. Something that gives us some feet, something that has yeah, a bus stop right outside. Of it. So it's a there was a yeah. it's a transit. So because it's a transit bus, but it only comes to a certain time. Okay. So sometimes if they have to be at work, like we just discussed this yeah, at our meeting. Right. Um, it goes certain directions. Right. right. So if they have to be to work at 9 a.m. because that bus might only pick them up at 7 a.m. Yeah. They get picked up at 7 a.m. and then the same thing. So they're going maybe 12, 15 hours. Okay. So that's something from this book, the plan C, is that that's something we're going to have to okay. tackle as it comes down. So, so is, yeah. may I ask a question? Is the, the MAC, the, the Millville something connector, is that bus going away? The MAC, I don't It's funded by Workforce Development. Uh, um, it's the bus that. Um, no. Okay. It's, it's, the, yeah, it's, it's the, the pastel sites funding. Yeah. Oh, okay. um, they found out that that's the one they had the library for. So the one that the gentleman you were speaking about uses that service from right. his location to his job. I just and we already know this, but we're also studying, and I have information to share with um, with everyone later. Uh, the state just finished; they chose Cumberland County and Camden to do a study called Predict, Align, Prevent, and. Um, the data that they shared with us just yesterday. I mean, it's not a surprise, but it really is compelling because when you look at the uh, outer lying areas, commercial township, there are zero child care centers there. There's zero um, SNAP ed stores that accept that benefit. And it's virtually a food desert. The closest grocery store is like 10, 15 miles away. And these people are in poverty. They either don't have a driver's license or they don't can't afford a vehicle or the vehicle's broken down. So they are literally out there <laughs> stranded, basically. So it's very compelling. So but I look forward to finding solutions. Right? Because that's what that's what you do. Thank you. To resolution number one four zero eight one. Resolution introducing and approving the calendar year 2023 county budgeted and notice of public hearing. And then ordinance number 14093, bond ordinance providing for various capital improvements in and by the County of Cumberland, New Jersey, appropriating $6,400,000. Therefore, and authorizing the issuance of $6,080,000 bonds for notes of the county to finance part of the cost thereof. Do you want me to comment on the various finance resolutions that are on blank? Uh, they're all blank. Most of them are blank. <laughs> um, uh, if you would like, please. Uh, yeah, it might be helpful for the public. Too. Um, so that first resolution is for introducing the budget uh, as recommended from the Finance Committee. It basically initiates the budget process. Uh, so when it's introduced, uh, if it successfully is introduced at the voting session, it would then have a public hearing at the subsequent meeting for the voting session on April uh, 25th. So I'll have a presentation that night. Uh, the public hearing on that for the public to comment on the budget would be at that point too. I do want to comment that uh, after the budget's introduced, uh, should there be any need for any uh, small amendments, that process does exist. And if there's anything substantial, that the public would of course be noticed and would have to be in the papers as well. Um, in the same vein, there are uh, there is one resolution on that's a placeholder. It comments on constitutional officers and two percent cap. Um, that may be that's going to turn into four resolutions. So what that means is anytime any department that's a constitutional officer, like the Board of Elections, Taxation, Prosecutor's Office, uh, if their budget requests exceed two percent, we need to do a resolution from the board explaining why it's over two percent, which. 
It happens more often than not because a lot of our union contracts have uh, step guide increases year after year that are over 2%. So if an employee gets a raise increase, chances are everyone else in the department's getting that same increase and then we have to do a resolution for it because the state says so. And we love the state and all its bureaucratic nature. Um, <laughs> Um, yeah, I have the microphone. Yeah. <laughs> um, in the same vein with the with the budget, there is a capital plan attached to it that's over six years. Uh, the bond ordinance that's on uh, for introduction would follow suit with the budget. So uh, when you introduce the budget, you can introduce the ordinance following that same capital plan that the budget's adopting. And then after we do the presentation, the public hearing on the budget, then it'll be the public hearing on the ordinance. Um, so in a nutshell, that's there's a lot of moving parts with these. So it's blank this week, but by the time for the voting session this month, they will be filled. Um, so I just wanted to provide that because there's a lot of missing information in my resolutions, and I wanted to clarify so that. Anyway, when they, uh, when they, as it comes out, they, people can contact you. Is there any way to outreach you and ask questions? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So if any members, as it comes out, it's, situated, it's already been set here. As stuff gets more public and you guys have questions, do the other me please reach out and ask that question. So yeah, and if I could throw one more dig in, uh, there's a state form for the budget that's going to really blow up the agenda size next to next meeting. So if there's another hundred pages and you guys have questions, I'm available. So that's that's all I wanted. <laughs> Uh, does anyone have any? I will make a motion to open the public comment. Second. All in favor? Aye. All in favor? Aye. 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 Seeing no, we'll close it. Wait, wait, so, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. yes, it's public, if you would like. Mr. Jake, you, okay. whoever saw the phone, whoever state, state your name and where you're from, and, and you, have, you have the floor. Okay, uh, Sandy Acevedo, Upper Deerfield Township. Um, my question is, on the, um, I noticed there's changes to the ARPA budget. Um, the the five hundred thousand dollars for housing support for services for unhoused persons um, is is that money for the code blue and the um, rural development it, that's on the agenda tonight? Is that coming out of the the um, ARPA funds or is that coming out of the regular budget? Uh, are you talking about the shared services for the code blue with the fifty thousand? Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, I'm sorry. Uh, no, that's for a separate grant uh, through Human Services for their Social Services for the Homeless Grant Funds. Have they got this, this $500,000 that was in the um, ARPA budget yet? Uh, so we split it. So every municipality, I think we started it last year, the year before, each municipality got $25,000 each. Uh, and then they continued the year after. and. Um, as far as rural development, uh, that we uh, we have the funds encumbered. I don't know if anything has really transpired with that because I think there has been some uh, progress with a uh, what's called a quad party agreement between us, uh, the city of Vineland, and then rural development. And I think the CCI is involved in that too. Um, but the, the amount of the substantial amount of those funds have not been expended. The ARPA funds have not been expended. Is that, is that what you're saying? Just for the rural development side, but we have been regularly taking some for, for the code blue um, for the three cities. Okay. Um, and the, the piece that's being removed for the um, emergency communications, uh, I'm looking through the, uh, the, uh, the budget for that. Is that the, the, the uh, middle mile or was that the uh, emergency <coughs> communication system piece that's being removed? That's, that's the middle mile section. So the reason for yeah. that, uh, with the middle mile grant application, uh, you can't match federal funds with federal funds. 
so at that point, if we were to get awarded that middle model grant, we weren't going to be able to use that four point uh, seven million anyway. And do we know if we got that that grant, the middle model grant, yet? Not at this time. Nope. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. This, That's has, it. this has to be also that middle mile that after this jail issue state there, we are going to have kind of a summer to talk about the middle mile project in whole, which I don't think has been done. And, and the players that, that every player that or every person wants to put input, including our IT, including our CFO, including any people that have input or want to ask questions, we'll, we're going to do that. That's part two of the next step of what we're doing. So. So, and, and of course, you'll probably be there, so. And uh, just one other quick note. So the, you rescinded the, the layoff, uh, and I get, I get the reason why. And it, so you do not have any plans to renew that uh, no. thing? No. And actually, okay. what a, the civil service had already did away with it. We just didn't do it officially at our end. And we, it, there was some, it's still out there, we want to put that today. It's not out there. So. Now, unfortunately, in the beginning of the meeting, the team wasn't working, so <laughs> the people online uh, missed the question that Mrs. Ridgeway had about, I guess, the, uh, the resolution for the energy um, lawsuit. Yeah, I guess. Ms. Ridgeway asked the question. Can I get for us? Well, if I remember, Mr. Woodrow, the, the bottom line is that we, uh, she asked a question about the, the questioning that why we're bringing another law firm in, uh, and, and I kind of said to her that, yeah, uh, the bottom line is that we have, um, there's a reason why we're doing it. Uh, we feel, uh, if I say this right or wrong, that if we feel that there are some issues that we need to address in this board as one, has talked about it, that CCJ is suing us for $6 million. The CCI has separated us from, and it was CCI being sued and also the county. They've separated themselves and we have uh, seen, we've uh, uncovered some stuff that we believe that uh, need a, uh, a unpartial or unbiased uh, or unfeathered un uh, 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 weedy representation in the county. And I told this uh, Ridgeway that uh, I can't I can't give her all the answers to why we're doing this, but as soon as the board, in which they did vote, we will be able to after we discuss it. Uh, until the closed session, uh, after our closed session, we will be able to start answering some of the questions so the public understands why we're taking this action and the things we see. As much as we can tell, as we can tell for now, uh, until our council. Uh, does uh, does their job in the beginning, and then we will. Uh, they, I would believe, you guys will understand that this board has a responsibility to take this action to bring this firm in, which we did not take lightly. We uh, we did some work to find this firm that would uh, represent us well. Um, so I hope I, I'm beating around the bush a little bit, but. Uh, Ms. Acevedo, you come to meetings, and Ms. Ridgeway comes to meetings, and then you hear us that uh, this, uh, all they ask for your indulgence or time until we can give you the answer of why we're doing this, and I think you'll understand why we're taking this action and why we believe, this board believes, this commission believes it's so important to make sure we have representation that can do what needs to be done. Um, <coughs> you're replacing the, the current. The attorney, or is, or they're adding, they're, they're working together. No, wait, they'll work together for a short period of time to get up to speed, and then this this law firm will take over, uh, and they'll, that other law firm will go by the wayside. Uh, it's a uh, we're being sued in the beginning. We're just being sued for six million dollars, which is not going to be good representation. But there are many other factors involved, that, and many other areas may. Uh, step out and we will share them as we can and, and we will share them while we're taking this uh, kind of action and because um, we have a responsibility to do that and uh, we have a responsibility to this county to do that. Uh, so I hope I answer you the best I can. So. Yes, yes thank you. You're and welcome. what's the name of the law firm that's currently uh, 
Dilworth-Paxton. 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 And this is no reflection on that? No, they're, they're a good law firm. They did their job. It's just that we, we have, there's a reason why we have to uh, step away from that law firm. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, anyone else on, on the line? They would have a question. Uh, anyone in the room? Oh, hold on, hold on, Mr. Hello? State, state your name and where you're from. Hello? Uh, Mr. Joyce, you want to be one? Go ahead, Mr. Joyce, you're, you're on. You have the floor. Thank you. Good evening again. I'm Nancy Richway from Upper Deerfield and Fairfield Townships. I have been informed that we have some new employees that are in management positions that are being trained and we are paying someone to come in and train them. I heard it was a substantial amount of money. I don't know if it's true, it was rumor. But my question is, if we are paying some of your new administrative employees, are we getting a contract with them that they will serve the, the county for X number of years in order to offset the cost of those particular employees being trained? Okay. Well, can we ask you more specific or would I like to do that? Sure, you can ask her. Who, Whoever who she's got. About? Who am I speaking about? Yeah. Well, we've hired a, a new administrator, yeah. a new dep deputy administrator, yeah. and a new clerk. Okay. Is that uh, normal that we bring our people in? Or? Is it normal to have to bring someone from outside in to train? You talk about Mr. Block that you're talking about? I don't know who they are or what they are. I was just informed last week that we're spending $80,000 to train them. And I'm just wondering if we're spending money to train people, are we going to have them employed with us for X number of years? Uh, that I think it's a fair question. Fair question. I'm just trying to figure out how to answer the question. Uh, well, you don't have to answer it. Just look into it and sign some contracts. Why do I need to sign a contract, Mr. Block? You're asking a question. Why? We brought him in because he's a guy that do, has, has wealth of experience to help our staff get rolling and he's done his he's done his job literally I don't think he's okay so we're paying Mr. Block but how about the employee I'm talking about the employees that we're training we're spending money to train three new employees at least are we going to have a contract that we're going to have them serve us for X number of years he's, he's three years five years Mr. Um, I think you're speaking about Mr. Block um, he was brought in briefly not to train the new employees. Um, we're quite confident in the new employees that were hired, but he was here really just as part of the transitional team to give up to be a consultant to us to make sure that we were paying attention to the things that we needed to. And we, and we paid him $80,000? No longer. He's done. He's was, and was that by resolution? Uh, I don't know. Did we do it by resolution? Mm -hmm. I don't, no, no, I don't think so. But there's no eighty thousand dollars. I think that's the false premise that yeah, yeah, I'm not yeah, understanding. Yeah, I don't know that number. Yeah, yeah I don't know either. I don't. And, and it can be looked into. Said, though, he's actually done as Mr. Rose said. He brought him in. And he's done his job. I think he's actually moved on. He's come once in a while. He pops his head in just to see how we're doing. But I think the correct question is now that they've 
that person's trained them. You're saying you want to make sure those people stay here for an X amount of time. Right, but he was never here. Correct. Okay. He was there for a transitional Just to make sure that we. And I'm going to give him credit. It was more about governmental efficiency. Yeah, that's his job. And that was his position. See how, to see what we see, uh, the inefficiencies we saw and and tackle those inefficiencies. And I'll give you one example of what he worked on is the jail, which got us, we are now in March. We hit the ground beginning January, almost less than two, a little over two months. And we've already made a decision, or we're getting to a major decision on the jail. And Mr. Block was a key piece of that to get us all the ducks in a row. He paid every, every dime that we paid him. He's worth just for that alone. He's worth every penny because he can look through the BS and get to the point. It's yeah. probably saved us hundreds of thousands this month. of dollars. Well, it just might be here. Money. So I think that maybe you got a little bit of misinformation, but thank you for bringing that to our attention. Okay, so I. I, I don't know if that answers your question, but we're very comfortable with what he's done for us. And not just the jail, that's just one piece of what he's done for us. So. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, anyone else in the public like to speak? Anyone on the phone? Um, and seeing nobody, did we have a motion to close? Yeah. I know it's Second. All in favor? Alright. Um, yes. um, we're going to have an executive session. Will there be any, I don't know, one second, will there be any action coming out of that? No, no action is anticipated, so do we have a. Uh, I have to put this. Go ahead. Resolution 2023-183, resolution providing for a meeting not open to the public in accordance with the provisions of the New Jersey Senator Byron and Mayor Open Public Meetings Act, NJSA 10 colon 4 12. Litigation, possible litigation, contract negotiations, and the attorney-client privilege matters required by law to be confidential. One, CCJ litigation. Two, JR Book settlement. Three, Yavani Martin workers' comp request submitted by Ultimate's office. Four, Brown class action. Five, DOJ settlement. B, e, matters relating to the employment relationship. One, Rowan College of South Jersey trustee search committee. Two, Bayshore Council. Three, Youth Services Advisory Council. Four, Veterans Commission. Five, Local Historian County. Six, Children's Interagency Coordinating Council, seven Human Services Advisory Council. All right, I have a yeah, you must be a roll call. I need a motion and second. Did someone want to make a motion to go to closed session? Second. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Pearson? Yes. Commissioner Muto? Yes. Commissioner Capitola? Yes. Commissioner Saleo? Yes. Commissioner Lowe? Yes. Deputy Director Romero? Yes. Director Albright? Yes. Second to adjourn. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Thank you, Ms. Lewis. I appreciate that. And second. To you, sir. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.